Hello and welcome to another World Cup preview. This time we are covering the last in Group E. It is Costa Rica and I'm joined as always. My name is Laura and I'm joined by Liam. How are you doing, Liam? Good. Uh, as you can probably guess, Costa Rica are not a team I know very much about, hence why I've got a Sampdoria shirt on for no apparent reason. Well, listen, uh, you, you know, I don't know if it was on purpose or not, but it kind of fits the colour scheme. Um, Kind of fits the colour scheme, so I'll, I'll give you yeah. that. Hmm. Um. Yeah, this is one of these situations, as has become the pattern while we're doing these reviews, where um, the, the review of the lowest profile team uh, becomes a de facto uh, summary of the group and how we think it's going to go. Um, I, I fear that may be the case this time as well, but nevertheless, we'll, um, we'll, we'll have a look at things and see, see how far we get. I thought the, the best way to start with Costa Rica, just to give people a bit of context about you know, they're, they're standing in the world of football and especially the FIFA World Cup is to look at the history of them at the World Cup. Uh, not a particularly illustrious one, I have to say, but we'll bring it up nevertheless um, and see see what we can see from it. For um, anyone who's about to get Italian 90 trauma flashbacks, I apologise. Yes, yes. <laughs> As you can see, round of 16, uh, 1990, uh, they, 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 that's how far they got um, at the expense mm. of... A country I don't want to go into. Um, uh, they well, you're right now, so what can you do? Yeah, well, yeah. Um, that was their debut at the World Cup. They didn't make any of the rest of the ones in the 90s, but they were at consecutive World Cups in 2002 and 2016, unfortunately failing, I think, to make it out the group stage, uh, from what that says. Didn't qualify for 2010 in South Africa, but they were there in 2014 and 2018. The most notable of their appearances coming in 2018 when they made it all the way to the quarterfinals. Um, certainly a nation whose uh, World Cup pedigree is more recent than um, than than many would suggest. Um, hmm. what, what, what's your opinion of Costa Rica as a force going into this uh, going into this this tournament? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, in 2014, did they not get out of the group at the expense of uh, England? If I remember I'm just looking at that now to double check that, and I believe you may be right. So um, mm -hmm. they did have a 1-0 win over Italy in the group stage, um, yeah. and they had a 0-0 draw with England and a 3-1 victory over Uruguay. So really, that World Cup group in 2000 and, um, 2000 and, uh 14 was one that uh, they really were not expected to go out of. They were probably, as is the case with this group, they were considered the also runs and shocked both Italy, Uruguay and England. It took them, um, they got past Greece in the last 16 and then it took the Netherlands to, to actually knock them out on penalties in the quarterfinals. They really were mm. quite, a, quite a, a considerable force in that 2014 World Cup. Do you expect anything similar going into this tournament? Um, I don't expect it, but at the same time, um, they are a team that you write off at your peril. Um, yeah. Being someone who is in Japan and obviously wants Japan to do well, I am a bit concerned at the way the Japanese media are going on and on about what Japan have to do to Spain and Germany mm -hmm. and completely just assuming that Costa Rica is going to be the shooty in one. That, yeah. that really does kind of worry me because... Um, just a, a recent form guide, as you told me just before we came on air. Oh damn it! You give me a craving for Iron Brew now. Oh. Cheers, Mike. You know, you know the, the nearest Iron Brew is about seven thousand miles away from me, right? Uh huh. Oh god. Anyway, um, right. Thanks well, for that. <laughs> yeah, but you can you can go out and get Wagyu beef anytime you want. So true. You know. True. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I know what I'm having for another night. Uh, right. Okay. <laughs> um, Anyway, back on topic. Uh, yes. What was I saying? Oh, I. Um, the J Japanese media are kind of disregarding Costa Rica. And recently, if you look at recent form guide, you told me before we came on air that in their last competitive game, they beat the USA. Yes, correct. 2-0. Yes. And USA recently beat Japan 2-0. Yep. Now, okay, granted, the Japan game was a friendly. But if you then say, well, they beat them, who then beat them... If, if Team A beats Team B and then Team B beats Team C, you should assume that Team A is better than Team C. Yeah, so Costa but, Rica should beat Japan for now. Yes. Them. Well, aye. But, of course, the form that, you know, the, 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 the bookies aren't going with that because last time I checked, I think Japan were 
twelve to one to win the group, and Costa Rica were forty to one. Yeah, but it's an interesting point that you bring up about um, about um, the USA, and I'm going to I'm going to bring up the the qualifying groups just to to hammer home that point. You know, we talk about a lot of the um, a lot of the nations having a certain narrative around them which is mm. often based on P- good PR rather than anything factual. I mean, you look there, I've heard lots of people, myself included, talking about the potential impact USA could have in that group with England, Wales and Iran. Costa Rica yeah. finished on the same number of, of points and actually, although their goal difference was significantly worse, um, you know, the, the, they've had as strong a campaign there uh, on the face of it as the USA and yet nobody's saying... Costa Rica could cause an upset in their group. No, no, they've definitely flown under the radar. Um, it's interesting to note that of the top four teams that qualify, USA are the ones that are getting the most coverage, and yet Mexico and Canada both finished above them, and Costa Rica beat them recently. So, yeah. really, those three other teams are perhaps more deserving of the the current praise that's being lavished on the USA squad. And I say that as somebody who obviously wants to see USA do well. But um... well, we, we talked about in the in the review of the Mexico team, you know, the, they're consistent qualifiers for the last 16, even if they do go out at that phase repeatedly. But in yeah. terms of World Cup pedigree of the four teams that have qualified from that group, they by far have the most. And yet, you know, like you say, it's, it's USA that are garnering all the attention. Now, it might be because they've got a, a golden generation in comparison to Costa Rica, um, and Mexico, but in terms of Canada's output, I mean, I don't know why pe- more people aren't talking about Canada after the after the qualification period they had. But we'll, we'll talk about that more um, when we get to the Canada um, team review. Mm. Um, co- going back to Costa Rica, um, there's a couple of players people will know about, and um, the most notable one, obviously, is Kaylor Nav- Navas, formerly of Real Madrid, now of PSG. How vital is he? Do you think to to any potential impact Costa Rica can have at this World Cup? He is. He is crucial. Um, he is to Costa Rica what Joe Hart is to Celtic. Um, yep. the, a great goalkeeper first and foremost, but also an excellent leader, an organiser. Um, if Costa Rica are one nothing up with five minutes to go, he will be the one that will marshal the defence and talk them through that last five minutes to eke out the result. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, he... It's a shame he never really got a fair run of it at Real Madrid because they, I mean, they do have Courtois, who is, in my opinion, one of the best keepers in the world at the moment. Yeah, and um, I think, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think Navas might have even overlapped with the end of of Casillas's career. I think so. Yeah, I, he he yeah. was for the for the for the majority of his career at Real Madrid, he was number two. Um, yeah, it was. Yeah, I think it was the tail end of Casillas, and then Courtois came in as the new quote unquote Galactico. You know, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. and Navas is a great goalkeeper, but unfortunately, when you play for a team like Real Madrid and you're a Costa Rican player, you're not going to carry the same clout as the Belgian national keeper, even though you might be almost as good a goalkeeper as he is. Um, yeah, and I think I think the other way of looking at it as well is, if you're talking about a team's chances of progressing in a World Cup being based on their star keep, uh, star player being a goalkeeper. Their chances of progressing full stop probably um, uh, start and end there, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, if Costa Rica do win any games in this group, and that's going to be a tough task for them, but if they do, I think it will be because of a superb defensive and goalkeeping performance. Um, because Spain, Germany, and even Japan are teams that like to attack and attack with pace and attack with aggression. Oh. And Costa Rica are going to have to figure out a way to weather that if they're going to get out of this group. Yeah, absolutely. Um, speaking of, um, you know, what what we can expect from the team, let's have a look at that squad now. As I share this, we've just recorded the um, the Japan preview, and Liam, with his knowledge of the Japan team, was able to tell us about the inaccuracies of the particular site that we're using. So, apologies to anybody who's got better knowledge of the Costa Rica team than us as to the. The accuracy of this, but we have to go with with what's published, and and, and we'll, we'll talk around that. Um, we've obviously got Kaylor Navas there with a couple of backup goalkeepers, Patrick Sequeira and uh, Esteban Alvarado. I don't think there's much else to discuss there. I think Navas is going to be 
quite obviously the first choice in what is potentially his last World Cup. So let's go on and look at the defence. Um, not a lot of household names there, I have to say, and more worryingly than that, as we've talked about previously, really not a lot of evidence that any of them are playing at a particularly high level. No, although in in their defence, I will say that you've got uh, you've got three players there from the MLS. Yeah, yeah, and I think a bit like the J League and the Australian A League, that is a very underrated standard of football. Um, Absolutely, I think I think Argentina have just called somebody up to replace an injured player from Atlanta United as well. So, yeah, you know the the their impact on the international game is um is growing. Yeah. Yeah, um, one that sticks out to me, because I think I've seen him play a couple of times, is uh, Brian uh, Oviedo um, yes. of, of Real Salt Lake. He uh, He's quite an accomplished defender who will uh, do do well. But uh, yeah, overall, that it's a bit of a threadbare squad, isn't it? It's not really... It is. There's no, there's no names there that jump out at you. Um, I'm having I mean, it's, to go not, back... it's not full of uh, Harps and St Mirren players like the Australia team is, but... Um, we'll, we'll... We'll not go into that, given the given the, <laughs> the nationality of the majority of our audience. Mm. Um, looking at midfielders, yeah, um, a, a couple more recognisable names. We've got Jason Benetti from from Sunderland. Um, uh, but apart from him, again, an awful lot of players coming from the South American sort of area in terms of playing football. Uh, yeah. Brian Reese is the only other one that you might recognise there because he has had a period playing, I believe, for Blackburn Rovers um, probably about a decade ago now, and he really is the talisman for, for, for Costa Rica. Um, is yeah. there anything there that you're seeing there that particularly um, stands out to you? No, I mean, Ruiz was, if I remember correctly, he was one of the star men in that 2014 yeah. team that vastly overachieved. Um, but again, you know, that was eight years ago. Um Football has moved on quite a bit since then, and Costa Rica are not any stronger now than they were then, unfortunately. So uh, it's it's going to be difficult for them. But, you know, Ruiz is one of those guys who can produce a wee bit of magic now and again. Absolutely. So as long as he's on the pitch, there's a chance that something could happen. Well, I A don't small know, chance, but a chance. I don't know what the chances are of him playing, like, you know... 90 minutes three times over the group games but certainly no. like you say if they're looking for something and maybe yeah. he's been benched for one of the games and they can bring him on fresh legged for the last 20 minutes or something like that there's a potential there yeah um, look, looking at the attackers we've only got Anthony Contreras Johan Venegas I thought that said Johnny Vegas but we'll not go into that um, <laughs> and... <laughs> I'm hungry I'm hungry for goals um, uh, and Joe Campbell formerly I, th- I believe now. Let me let me double check this because I'm about to say something here. I thought he was formerly of Arsenal, but I've just had another player's name um, pop into my head that I might have got the two mixed up. So let me just double check that. Uh, yeah, no, he formerly is of Arsenal. Twenty three appearances. Oh yikes! Twenty three appearances between 2011 and 2018, and then spent majority of the rest of the time out on loan in various other places. Um. Any particular danger there from the front men that you can you can establish? No. No. <laughs> no, Listen, no guys, if I'm being, if I'm being what, honest, no. Guys, we have we have now done well, this is the end of group E. There's four teams in each group, so this is what, like our sixteenth review so far. Yeah. You're doing well to get any content out from us at this point. <laughs> and Costa Rica is not the one for us to go ham on on, on our football geekery, that's for sure. No, um, I mean, let, let's talk about the group in general, though. What, what, yeah. what do we think is going to be... How is this group going to break down? Well, I mean, had I not looked at the run that they had at 2014, I would have, and, and the fact that they have matched USA so well, I might mm. have written off Costa Rica... A lot more than I have now. Like I think, mm. I think, my, I think there's a possibility they could do something, take points off somebody. Whether that mm. translates to qualifying or not, I don't know. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, as much as I'm a big Germany fan at the World Cups, and I think their ability to just perform, perform, perform is always massive. I could, I could quite easily see Spain topping this group if I'm honest. 
What about you? Hmm. Uh, no, I'm going to stick with Germany. I think Germany are going to top the group. Um, yep. Because when we looked at the Spain squad, I was impressed at how how good it was. Um, better than I was expecting. But I do wonder if there's a, a perhaps it's a team of individuals. Um, we've seen how the likes of England have come unstuck in the past with the you know, 11 fantastic individual players, but who can't necessarily play together. Yeah. And something that Germany and Japan both have is an incredible team dynamic. Mm -hmm. Um, And that, you know, if Japan are going to produce a shock, a team like Spain is the the sort of team I would expect them to produce it against rather than a team like Germany. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of Japan, just because we've just so recently covered them, um, you mentioned briefly at the start of this video the potential that they've maybe underestimated Costa Rica. Is that a real concern for you? Do you think that that's something that could come to fruition or do you think Japan will take the three points in that particular fixture? I I believe that if they play to their strengths and Costa Rica play to their strengths, Japan would still win. Uh-huh. I believe Japan are a better team than Costa Rica. But... Yeah. My worry is that they might get a good result in the first game and then underestimate the second game because historically, that is where Japan have come unstuck. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, because even when they get knocked out of the last tournament, if you remember, they were beating Belgium 2-0 for like yeah. 75 minutes and then they just crumbled. Um, you know, uh, it, it, Japan do have a terrible habit of shooting themselves in the foot sometimes and... Uh, I really, really hope they're not going to do that against Costa Rica. Um, mm-hmm. But as I said, if they can keep it alive until that final game with Spain, I think there's a chance Spain could be that big team that bottles it. I know I've said France already, but I think France and Spain both have the same problem. Fantastic individual players, but there's still question marks over whether it's a cohesive unit. And well, you it's need interesting. to have a cohesive unit to win a World Cup. It's interesting that you bring up France, and I'll use this extra bit of time that we have to to veer slightly away from Group E and go back to France, who we've reviewed already. Mm. Um, you were quite quite sure in your views that there there may be a, a potential collapse for France at this this World Cup. Mm. Since we recorded that video, and at the time of recording, news mm. has now emerged that Karim Benzema, Ballon d'Or winner and star striker for France has suffered a potential um, tear of his quadricep muscle. Um, oh, initial it. reports suggested that he would be out against uh, just for the game against Australia, the opener. But mm. there are multiple reports now coming out suggesting that he might w- miss the World Cup in its entirety. Um, what does that say to you about France's chances? I mean, I, I know you... Let's not forget they won the last World Cup without him, so... Yeah. You know, there's nothing to say that they particularly need him, but given that his form that he's had over the last couple of years, he was definitely going to be an asset to them. What difference does it make to you in terms of France's chances if if he misses a either that first game or potentially the entire tournament? Well, first of all, if it's a tear of any muscle, he's out the tournament. Yeah, because that that's a minimum three weeks. Right? Yeah. That, that that just straight straight off the bat. If if it's a tear, he he's out. There's no question. Um, or it would be very irresponsible to bring him back because he would not be fully fit no. after after one or two weeks with that kind of injury. Um, secondly, any team in the world is going to be weaker if you take Benzema out of it, right? Yeah. But France is perhaps one of the very few teams that could absorb the loss of somebody like that because you've got guys like Mbappe who can step forward and, do, and Griezmann who can step forward and do the job. Yeah, and let's um, not forget Olivier Giroud, who, who, as much maligned as he is for being in the squad, certainly did a job in that, that World Cup winning team of 2018. Uh, France have uh, seemed to be plagued by injuries more than a lot of other teams, obviously losing in Kunku of RB Leipzig just before the, the tournament started as well. So it's going yeah. to be interesting to see that, that, that how that affects them. Just um, before we finish off this video... Is there any more um, news or things that have come out since you've covered any of the teams in previous videos that now that we're closer to the tournament you think might change your opinion of uh, of things that you might have covered previously? Um, well, I'm a wee bit less inclined to support Qatar now that they've banned Bevy in the stadiums. 
Do you know it's it's inter- it's interesting that you say that because I I saw that and I thought well of course and yeah. what it made me think was I think there's been a bit of a lax attitude towards Qatar in terms of people thinking I but they'll come round like no, no. by the time people get there and the World Cup's kicked off they'll they'll relax their rules and and, and make it a good tournament for everybody and I think they've completely underestimated what they're walking into the the Qataris will not bow to anybody for any reason I don't think. No, and the thing is, these are all things that should have been hammered out before the tournament was even awarded, let alone the day before it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also, I'm just, you know, I'm going to go on my political high horse for a minute here. The fact that alcohol is still on sale in the corporate sectors of the ground, that is just the ultimate F you to any working class supporter who has worked and saved and scrimped to get to this tournament. Well, I mean, I think it says everything about the culture of the World Cup that we've got coming up. You only need to look at those pitiful pictures of the, the £9 Greek feta salad and stuff like that that's been shared about from the fan zones. There's a, there's a clear intention here at this World Cup that making money comes at the at the expense of absolutely everything else. Um, but also they will they will they will make sure elitism remains in the way that they do it. See, that's the thing. I mean, again, as I say, I'm, I'm separating the Qatari government from the Qatari team here because n- nobody in the Qatari team has ever done anything to personally upset me. So I have no axe to grind with them and I genuinely wish them well. But the Qatari government can go and do one. They really have just... They've, they've, they've taken the piss on every level with this tournament, honest to God. Yeah. Uh, I, would, I would encourage anybody who hasn't seen it, um, I know... Liam, probably your chances of having watched this is not not high, but um, Ian Hislop, famed political commentator in the UK, um, had rather a forthright conversation with Gary Neville, who was who was hosting Have I Got News for You. I'm oh, sure I've seen people it. have, uh, seen, have it. seen it on the internet, and I have to say, he handled it. Not Gary Neville, Ian Hislop handled it very very well and made his point very very clear. And I think for a guy who's usually very sure of himself, Gary Neville was left with not much to say. No, and the thing is, I usually like Gary Neville. He's done a lot of good work for for uh, poverty charities and whatever. But uh, no, Ian has up absolutely handed him his arse on that one. And uh, yeah, and, and I think yeah. that's the thing to say about Gary Neville. I think most people would would not have had an issue with him going and taking the Qatari money if he hadn't tried to play both sides. If yeah. he hadn't spent. The last two years making um, documentaries about the atrocities in Qatar and then failed to confront his friend David Beckham, who's rumoured to have taken £10 million to promote it, and then taken money himself. Because the other Mm. thing is, he could have taken money from the BBC or ITV to go and present there, but he didn't. He took it from the Qatari state, from BN Sport. That's a different matter altogether. Um, But, you know, we could do a whole podcast on that. (laughs) We we probably will at some point as this tournament progresses. And uh... yeah, it'll be interesting to see as we as we stand here a matter of hours away from the kickoff. It'll be interesting to see once all the talk dies down how the how the tournament in and of itself actually goes. So, um, with yeah. that said, uh, please make sure and continue to watch for our our team previews. That's the end of Group E. We've got F, G, and H to go. Um, Liam will be joining me for all of those. Um, and we hope you've enjoyed what we've provided so far and what we're going to provide both in terms of these previews and throughout the tournament. Liam, thank you for joining me and I'll see you again for the next one. See you then. Thank you.